It's time for the Giz Whiz with Mads, maddest writer, Dick D. Bartolo. This is episode 1608, recorded Thursday, February 2nd, 2017. Sticker shocks! On this episode of the Gizwiz, Dick has a lot of gadgets from the New York Boat Show. It's a new month, so a new theme for my crappy corner. And Kelly has a better way to clean your microwave. All next on the Gizwiz! It's the same with Dickie D and OMG chat on your PC. It's time for the Gizwiz because gadgets are his business. They've got a gizmo sickness, geek disease. Under pathology, rows and rows of USBs, growing, growing, hell. Get ready for the Gizwiz now. Now it is time for the Gizwiz. And here he is. He has a doctorate in gadgets. Dick D. Wow. Bartolo. Dr. Dick D. Bartolo to Dr. you. Dr. Dick D. Yeah. Uh, how uh, are you doing, Dickie D? I'm good. I don't have a doctorate uh, in gadgets, but I have a band aid in the medicine cabinet. <laughs> that's and good. that's about as. As close to the medical profession right. as I can get. You got a little bit no, of hydrogen I'm peroxide, I'm good. you're good. That's all you need. Yeah, yeah. So how was PAX? PAX was fantastic. And you may or may not be able to tell, but I do have a little bit of a uh, something going on in my, my nose, my throat. Um, I, I, I did catch the con crud. It's kind of become uh, a, a running joke that whatever convention I go to, I catch something. Except CES. Except you came CES. Back. People at CES were clean. I don't understand. Yeah, think. and then there were 165,000 people at CES. How many at PAX? Uh, gosh, I don't know. Definitely not that many. I would, okay. I would guess under 10,000 is my guess. Okay, okay. but uh, they were easy. all in one room. All that in one was room. the problem. You know, I may hug people more often at PAX <laughs> than I hug them at oh, CES. That, See, that, yeah. that might be the issue. But yeah, PAX is a fantastic uh, place for people who are all into video games, and I had a really fantastic weekend. A lot of times at PAX, I'll be working, or you know, I have some things to come. But we've had a booth, uh, Minecraft. My gaming group has had a booth in the past, and we didn't have one this. So it was it was really really nice just to really be totally chilled out and just go walk the convention floor. And I got to hang out with uh, some of my Twitch fans for oh. basically the entire weekend and it was just really 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 fun and that was down in san antonio so it was just a, oh. a drive down oh great yeah oh yeah. oh the, the one in boston is yet to come yes that's in basically in a month that's oh, pax okay. east and that okay. yeah that'll be basically a month away um so yeah yeah it was a really 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 good time and uh glad i went i'm really glad i how, went how did they get penny arcade uh, since it's video games. Right, so uh, this it's PAX is a very weird inception. It started out as a web comic, and still is. Uh, it's called the, the, the Penny Arcade uh, comic, which with two characters, Gabe and Tycho, and they talked about video games, and that was basically it. And then they started, a, it's a very popular webcomic, so they started a convention, Penny Arcade Expo, and that was all centered around video games, just like the comic was centered around video games. And it has just grown and grown and grown, and is one of the only, you know, real regional uh, big video game conventions where companies release things. You know, other than E3, it's really... The only other, uh, you know, well-known video game convention is maybe Gamescom and stuff uh, in Europe and stuff like that. But yeah, it's uh, it's just one of those things that kind of had a funny start and is now almost something completely new and different. Of course, the Penny Arcade stuff is still in there. Gabe and Tycho do lots of signings and pin tradings, and uh, a lot of their merchandise has characters from the web comics and stuff like that. So uh, that's how it uh, it all kind of uh, was wow. grown. Yeah, exactly. Wow, that's great. Yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah, I got to in uh, I got to see a whole bunch of video games and got to also just meet a whole bunch of people who are kind of in the community. Discord is a uh, is a is an application that I use with my communities to help chat and do uh, calls, audio calls, and they were there, and I had gosh, like an hour and a half long conversation with their PR manager and stuff like that. And so. 
It's a great time. It was a really, really good time. At Excellent. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, all that, right, well, there's no there. Discord here. No, none here. Uh, because I was at the New York Boat Show where there were two introductions and the first one, and Chad, you have to ride the volume on this. So here's the difference. Uh, the boat show is a public show. And also the boat I was on, there was a salesman there, I think with a hot prospect. Ooh, <laughs> so we excited. were trying to, I, I said, is it, is it okay if we kind of tape here as you wrestle this man to the right, ground? Exactly. Uh, uh, so the, the video, the audio is a little bit low, but you'll get to see for the first time ever, this was the introduction of this new Sea Ray boat. Hey, Dickie Martola, man, it's Venice Rider, and the Gizwiz, one take theater here at gizwiz.tv and at the New York Boat Show. You hate to go home and not buy something. So we're thinking about the Sea Ray. This is the new 40-footer. I'm going to look what they call it. It's the Sea Ray SLX 400. So it's a 40-foot boat with a 12-foot plus beam. All right, we're going <laughs> to stick the camera just down in the cabin so you can take a quick little look down there. We're in the cabin now, so a nice little dinette uh, service here. I'm sure that this folds down and probably makes into a bed. But then if you want more sleeping, in the back we have a huge double bed. Actually, it's a queen-size uh, bed. On the side there is probably storage under there. Then, this is the head. I'll open the door for you. So that's the head. The curtain, that slips all the way around the head and becomes a shower. Okay. This is the and fanciest boat I've ever boat. seen. Oh, beautiful boat. <laughs> that's a beautiful neat. basin in there. And very uh, tech water faucet. And then over here is your little galley. Okay, so here's a refrigerator ice maker and microwave oven. Here's your Samsung flat screen TV, uh, indirect lighting, and those are the steps up to the deck. Okay, up to the so back deck. So we're going to walk up the deck as we move. And I'll show you the dashboard. <laughs> so these bolsters are here so you can stand or they'll fold down and then you can sit. And we have two monitors over here from Ray Marine. And on a boat like this, you set up the gauges just the way you want them. Move any gauge anywhere. And we showed you out front where you can sit. Plenty of seating back here. There's an outdoor dining area. And we have lounges back here. So I just swapped places with the salesman who went the we other way. So these are two barbecue grills. TV. Well, this is the most amazing thing about this boat, is the fold-down gunnel. So now you, at sea, you have your own little swim platform that people can dive from or use watercraft from. And finally, on this side of the boat, there is, oh, there's a compartment under here. This whole rear uh, couch lifts up. And That's I nice. uh, grabbed a, a still shot of it. And so it holds two empty full, area full size sailboards in there. Your own little sailfish with you. Okay, that slides in there too. Uh, depending on the engine options, it runs about a half a million dollars and can go 40 to 50 miles an hour depending on what wow, engine you select. Wow, that's fast. Also, this guy That is here, a fast. When you're traveling, this can fold up to be your transom. That is it. It is the 2017 Sea Ray 400 SLX, and we're at the New York Boat Show. This is the first time it's being seen. I said uh, half a million dollars, so Patreon members are going to have to kind of perk up those <laughs> donations. <laughs> Um, no, I will not be seeing one of these in my lifetime, except the way we see it here. But it's pretty neat. To keep our total management of Florida and the Gizwiz, one takes theater here at gizwiz.tv at the New York Boat Show. Ahoy, mateys. Wow. Absolutely incredible. Uh, I, would have, I would have assumed that that boat cost even more than half a million dollars. Well, you know what? I almost thought the same thing. Because it it, um, it has joystick steering, and joystick steering 
is one of the most amazing things. And, and the reason I know that is because I use joystick steering on another Sea Ray, not this one, but another boat that was, I think, I think it was 480,000. And I got a call from Sea Ray saying, we have a demo boat near you. Chelsea Piers is about two miles away. And they said, if you'd like to see it, come on down. So I went down there and it was docked all the way in from the Hudson. So there were like dozens of piers between me and the Hudson. And I got on and I said, that's just amazing. I said, but you know, I've never used joystick steering. And he said, uh, oh, well, you're going to do it now. And I said, uh, well, what do you mean? He said, you're well, like, you're going to need training or something. <laughs> <laughs> he said, you're going to, you'll take it out uh, to the Hudson. I said, are you kidding me? And he said, no. I said, will you sit right next to me and, and grab? He said, you're not going to need me, but I'll sit next to you. So, Chad, what it does is it runs there. It runs two computers. You can actually move the boat sideways and it varies the speed and the direction of the propellers as you move. I, I literally I was shaking like a leaf, but I actually took the boat from the pier through in and out of all these rotten pilings and out into the Hudson. And, uh, it was amazing. And then out wow. in the Hudson, he showed me, he showed me one other thing, neat thing. It's called virtual anchor. And he said, pick a landmark lined up with this windshield here. He said, and then hit virtual anchor. And I hit, I hit it and you hit the engine start up, stop, start up, stop. And even though the tide was running out, those wow. the virtual anchor kept the boat still <laughs> in wow. this flowing hut i know so it's, know. it's basically it uses gps and other positioning to, to is, make sure the boat doesn't move an inch exactly wow. exactly the gps nails where you are and it says okay i can keep you there so this boat also has that Wow! In installed on it. That looks like uh, a really, really, really. I mean, I, I mean, in, in terms of boats, I mean, that's the highest class. I mean, not the high. I mean, <laughs> we've all seen those yachts that <laughs> that are yeah, billions. yeah, yes. Um, well, it, it's <laughs> the most unique to have a the, the whole side of the boat folds open. That looked awesome. I mean, Which this is, looks like the ultimate uh, between a party boat that you could take your friends out on and. Uh, you know, almost a mini yacht where you could, you had the head, you had the galley, you had, you know, had your own room that you could uh, uh, stay out and, and go, you do basically a trip out and, and stay. Very yeah, exactly. Cool. Yeah, they, they sell they sell it as as a party boat weekender. So four right. people can go out, stay overnight with a shower in the head and everything. But it, it you can take, I think the guy said, 16 to 18 of your friends out. And... Every area has its own local stereo station, uh, stereo oh, system. Oh, wow. So it has like little so the pods. So people you in the bow, yes, the people in the bow can have oh, their wow. own. The people relaxing at the back can have their own stereo selection. Every cup holder has LEDs in it. Wow. <laughs> yeah. It's pretty neat. Wow. Pretty okay. Neat. Well, when I win the lottery, um, I'll make sure that uh, you get one of those boats, okay? Oh, oh, oh there wow. You, there you go. Wow. Okay. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Chat room, you are my witness. <laughs> witness. Put it down. <laughs> get it notarized. Uh, absolutely amazing. And that is from Stingray, where you can find out more. Uh, uh, C-Ray. C-Ray, sorry. I C -Ray. That's okay. Uh, yeah, uh, there is a Stingray boat, but this, that, the C-Ray the Entertainer. Wow. Uh, oh, and the sunshade in the back is hydraulic. You just push a button and that comes out. And, of course, all that, that side that falls down is hydraulic. The couches that open are hydraulic. It's pretty I'm neat. I'm really surprised. I, I didn't think I would say this, but it seems like half a million is a really good bargain for this boat. <laughs> yeah. I, I swear that this would have cost a million. Uh, it's pretty neat. It's pretty oh, wow. neat. Wow. Incredible. Well, we can all dream. This may be on the one of the best gadgets of 2017. Uh, <laughs> yes, exactly. Because exactly. it costs so much. Okay, well, moving on. <laughs> okay, so now another thing, uh, an expensive gadget, but a, a gadget you may not know exists. It's called Seakeeper. Now, Seakeeper has been around for years, but they introduced something new at the New York Boat Show. Seakeeper is a gyroscope that mounts in your boat 
and spins at tremendous speeds, like over 10,000, I think it is, revolutions a minute, and balances the waves. Well, they have a little video on their website. So we'll see two boats, and we'll see one boat, and you'll watch the bottom of the screen. It'll tell you which boat has the sea keeper and which one doesn't. So you can run that little video. Here we go. Um, all right, so this is a boat running uh, by itself, and this has a sea keeper aboard it. So you'll notice even though it's leaping over waves, it's going straight ahead. Most people get seasick when the boat rocks back and forth. And now we're going to see, so this boat that we're watching now is without the sea keeper. And that's the thing that gets people ill is oh, that, is that right? rocking – Right and left rocking. And around. yes, and oh yeah, what is yeah? Mm, ta -da. So that is, and now oh, wow, the Sea Keeper boat is it is, looks straight and it, yes, oh, wow, it's just doing a little up and down. How on earth does but, that work? Uh, oh my gosh, that that gyroscope keeps it in balance so that and there's there's what it looks like without the uh there it goes wow. again performance underway here's here's the one without it near closest to us kind of struggling riding over those waves oh wow that's that's actually quite uh looking at the video that is quite an obvious difference yes now it's the one on the far side that is rolling and rocking now, these things, that's what it looks like, but they require I, – I love the fact that they say easy installation. Yeah, right. And, <laughs> and then under, under easy installation, it says can be completed in as little as two days. Yeah, wow. <laughs> I was going to say eight hours, but two days. Yeah, yeah, two days, and they may have to <laughs> add additional stringers. Right, because um, what it's doing is it's, it's, it's running that gyroscope, and it needs to be attached everywhere on the hull, yes. hull so it can keep the hull <laughs> straight oh and gosh. steady. Yes, yes. Okay. And before this year, and this is coming out in the spring in case we have any real boaters uh, uh, paying attention, is the original ones were designed for yachts. And they required AC power to have enough power to spin the generator, uh, to spin the gyro. So they were only for big boats that had generators that generated AC. So at the New York Boat Show, they introduced one that can be put on boats 30 to 40 feet and can just run from DC power, which boats that don't have generators rely on. Everything is DC 12-volt uh, power. Uh, now, there's, there's what they look like. And the littlest guy is, you want to take a guess? Oh, man. A anybody have a guess? 500,000. Well, no. Um, <laughs> I would say, gosh, uh, 3,000. That's my uh, average. Okay. That, that's very good. You're just off by 24,000. Oh, my uh, gosh. <laughs> Okay, so the little guy, the new Sea Keeper 3, is 26,900,000, not including installation. Oh, my. All right. God. So these are for people that, like, buy that Sea Ray. I could and buy a whole car. <laughs> You could buy you. That's hat. Look at this one, the thirty-five. Now I have no idea how big of a boat that's supposed to fix, but that's half of the the Sea Ray. Twenty yes, two hundred and ten thousand dollars. And after installation, it's three quarters of a Sea Ray. Holy so, cow! This is for people who have a lot of money. You know, probably corporations are all right. on this. Have party right. boats. They don't want their clients to get sick. And if, yeah, there's one for 157000 Cheesy Louisey. <laughs> I was thinking, you know, yeah, it's expensive. You know, 3000 bucks. It's just a bit of metal. 
Holy mackerel! That is a yeah. car. That is multiple cars. Yeah. That is an well, you know, maybe expensive you car. You get a hundred thousand of those. Did you ever have a gyroscope top? Yes, yes. Where you spin it, and you can lay it on its side, and it stays. Yes, there. I put on a piece of string, and right. it would be steady on the right, string right, right, until right. it almost ran totally out of power. You could get like a uh, hundred. And ten thousand of those, and put them on strings, and you. I boat. think it would work just the same. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> uh, yeah. Wow. Just have you have your company going. Hey, that's that top is stopping. You get that one. I'll get this one. Yeah, hire hire someone full time uh, salary uh, for less than a hundred thousand dollars a year, and all his whole job is to keep those tops spinning. Keep those tops spinning. Wow. Keep those top- Wow, that is yeah. incredible. Um, and it takes up a whole bunch of room. Like that's the other thing is you got to find a place to put it. Yes, you have to find a place, and you have to probably install some more uh, beams. Uh, wow! So that it can rock your not so it cannot rock your boat. Yeah, right. right. Uh, the boat oh, is not a rocking if you got a sea keeper. <laughs> that's that's right. the motto. That's uh, it. Wow. Okay. Well, I'll start saving. I don't know if I, if I win the lottery, if I can get you one of those. Uh, no, I don't want, be no, no, out I'll, of rock, the I'll rock around. I'll yeah, rock you'll around rock with the, the with the Sea Ray. Okay. The Sounds C-ray. good. That, that's so fine. Okay. Uh, okay. When it gets rough, I'll close. You know, I'll bring the transom door up <laughs> right. and I'll close the side of the boat so no one rolls in. Exactly. Um, okay. Our final guy is probably something I should have done in the beginning uh, before you heard the prices of those things. Um, but I went by. By uh, this booth uh, where they were showing the advanced medical kit Ooh. for boaters. Uh, the the uh, distributor is Core Medical Booth. And now this is what was interesting about this is that it has an automated external defibrillator. Oh. Uh, so, but the guy didn't have a dummy there. Everybody can fill in their own joke. I said, what do you mean you didn't have a dummy? I brought Dennis. But so anyway, I said, so how easy is to do? And he said, well, I have a video on my website. Well, it turns out that I went to his website and it says video coming soon. But I found another interesting video of what would happen if you were on a boat, someone had a heart attack how would you use an automated external defibrillator? And it's two minutes, and it's three people who never saw this before. So let's see their reaction. Okay, here we go. These are people from all walks of life who have never used a defibrillator. We asked how they would react if they needed to use a defibrillator to help save a person's life. I've only seen doctors do it. I've only seen medics do it. So it would be, I would have to find the the nerve to do it. I've never seen it done in person and I really wouldn't have the faintest idea whether I was doing it right or not. I would call 911. I would be out of options. Once they tried the Heart Start Home defibrillator, they saw how easy it was to follow its instructions. Place pad exactly as shown in the picture. Press firmly to patient's bare skin. Shock advised. Stay clear of patient. Press the flashing orange button now. No, not that button. No, that's the wrong button. Oh, gosh. Because Cut I the blue wire. Just unzip it, and it told me exactly what to do. When you just hear, you know, about a defibrillator, you, you think, you know, big piece of equipment and complicated. But this was real simple. You open it up. I'm about ready to fall asleep. The instructions, it was easy. It's music. I was real surprised. The Phillips Heart Start provides step-by-step coaching for ordinary people in extraordinary moments. Pull the cartridge handle to begin a series of voice instructions. Begin by removing all clothing from the patient's chest. Cut clothing if needed. Remove protective cover and take out white adhesive pads. Next, place the pads on the victim's chest. With built-in smart technology, the Philips Heart Start will sense your actions, adapt to your... No, you stupid dummy! (laughs) You did it wrong! He's gonna die! ...analyzes the victim's heart rhythm and decides if a shock is needed. Shock advised. Stay clear of patient. Press the flashing orange button now. Shock delivered. 
sh- person killed. Yeah. <laughs> no, it, it was kind of fascinating that after you put the pads on, it tells you whether or not a right. shock is recommended or not. It also, after it gives it the first shock, it, it reanalyzes the person and will tell you if it's a second sh- uh, shock is needed. Wow. And you, the batteries are built into those pads. So the only additional expense is every four years. The, the guy at the booth said the batteries really last for five, but for safety, they recommend <laughs> buying a new set of pads every right. four years because that uh, brings in new batteries. Interesting. Um, yeah. So the list price is <clears throat> like close to twelve hundred dollars, but they sell used defibrillators. You know, just get the oh, new pads with, with the it. new okay. battery. Yeah. Yeah. And this was interesting. If you live in New York State and buy one, even a used one, you get a five hundred dollar tax credit. Oh wow. So the guy said you could have one in your home or on your boat for as little as two hundred and fifty dollars if you buy the seven hundred and fifty dollar used one. Right. That's actually very interesting that they're subsidizing that. That's really cool. Yeah, I'm I'm kind of amazed that California usually does everything. Right, exactly. You know, for people. So I'm surprised that maybe when they hear this, they'll say, what? New York will give six hundred dollars. Exactly. Right. Um, Wow. So. You could have your own, you know, a defibrillator is something that I assume is like in convention halls and, uh, you know, big what? public spaces like malls and things like that. I, I haven't, you know, or, or schools and stuff like that. You know what? I think we might have one now at MAD. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, I, I think one, one, you know, MAD is, is part of Warner Brothers. So, right. like, we're part of uh, TMZ is on our floor and... Uh, couple of other uh, TV shows. I think we have a universal one of those in somebody's right. office. Right. Hopefully unlocked. Right. Yeah. You, you have to break the glass, break your hand <laughs> to get at it. But, yeah, I, I think that this is a fantastic device to just have around, and especially on a boat, you know. There's very few situations where you have so much stuff that you do on a boat, but yet you're still cut off from uh, the normal world. You know, when you're camping, you're not going to bring a defibrillator with you. No. But when you're on a boat, you could easily store it somewhere on the boat and uh, maybe save someone's life if you can't get back in time. Yeah. So yeah. You, can't, you also can't no. get a helicopter to a boat uh, all that easily. You can't do a medic. No. No. Um, <clears throat> so interesting, interesting. Uh, and uh, the, uh, the list price? Uh, the list price of that kit is like, Two thousand six hundred ninety-five dollars. Right, but it seems and like you can get a defibrillator for eleven hundred something. But like I said, you get the used ones start at seven fifty. I think they even have used defibrillators on uh, Amazon. I took a peek there too. Right. Man, this the, this so. kit is incredible. It looks like it has an oxygen tank. Yes, I mean and... it is set for <laughs> everything: strokes, heart attacks. And, wow. You know. Holy cow. You, know, you almost about, need a degree about, in order to use it, though. But Yeah. About three and a half years in, you would go, can someone please have a heart attack because this battery just <laughs> has know, right? six months left on it? Please. I want to. You start, you start a house practice just to use the medical uh, kit. Yeah. yeah um, exactly. This looks like a nuclear disaster kit. It's just, you know, this <laughs> it is what you'd be. want is for those uh, people who uh, <clears throat> build those shelters. Yes, this would be perfect for them. Gosh, that's incredible. Yeah, I would really feel like I would want some type of degree or at least uh, <laughs> a class or two on how to use absolutely everything in there and how to determine you know, what, to, what symptoms w- would require uh, this sort of stuff. Very, very cool, though. Uh, the tra- Traveler Advanced Medical Kit Red Bag uh, from Core yeah. Medical. Very, Core very, very cool. Core Medical. Okay. And that... Brings us to, ladies and gentlemen, we tried to stop it, but we can't. It's Chad's no, it, Crappy, <laughs> crappy Corner. Chad's Coughing Corner. Chad's Coughing oh, Corner. You got the first aid kit. You surprised us. I did. Us. There we go. We have the red bag first aid kit here. 
Uh, this does not have a defibrillator. It just has a battery and some uh, electrical tape. That's it. Oh. Uh, okay. Yeah. There you go. No. Uh, so we are back at it with the normal crappy corner, and yes, the results are in. We asked our patrons what you guys would like to see, and over 77 patrons uh, answered and responded. The options were desk toys, security gadgets, and camping gadgets. And the winner is da -da -da -da, desk toys. Desk toys. Desk toys. Desk toys took it away with 43% uh, of the vote. And so um, <clears throat> I did, because getting back from PAX and stuff, uh, we were, I was a little bit short of time, so I wasn't able to order anything online. So I had to go out into the real world and find something, and so I ended up finding something um, at five below. So what I found was, and I think that you will absolutely love this, Dickie yes, D, yes, yes. is a mini train set. Oh! And of course, if you're wondering what a desk toy is, it's uh, something, you know, if you're at an office, you can have sitting on your desk. Some things are more adult focused, uh, like I remember, you know, the Newton, the Newton toy, you know, that with the little, um, the, the solid, you know, uh, what are those, uh, solid like steel balls that you could hit back yeah, and yeah, forth. Yeah, like the perpetual or, machine kind Right, of exactly. Thing. Yep, or yep. Uh, I've never seen like sand sculpture things. Um, but I remember as a kid, my mother had a few desk toys for us children when we were in the office with her. And so this is, that's kind of what inspired this. So a mini train set. Uh, I already went ahead and opened this up and installed a battery in the engine, which Ooh. was a little bit difficult. It required a little itty bitty screw. Uh, oh, just, <laughs> just to let you know, yeah. Um, you not, you, did you not use your electric screwdriver? I couldn't. No, no, I didn't. I didn't <laughs> use the toy driver. I, I didn't. Um, this says ages six and up, uh, sixteen pieces. Now, what's funny is before I didn't even realize this. One of the uh, the clamps has already popped off. <laughs> Oh, okay. And I don't have it, so uh, whoopsie doodle um, with that one. You get a little bit of instructions with it, and then you get some pieces. You have, uh, looks like one, two, three, four pieces that are curved. Oh man, I may have to bust out some scissors for that tape. You get four straight pieces. You have mm. one engine. All right, let's pull them out. This is what he looks like. And his on switch is right here, and you push okay. it in basically towards the wheel, and then it'll start. You can actually see there's a little a copper ring right there. That's, yes. This is actually making contact with the copper oh, okay. ring and, and causing it to start. So that wow, is, that's just like a real locomotive. <laughs> exactly, right? You've seen the copper Except ring. Yeah, oh, yeah. It takes like 10 guys, though, to push that lever. Exactly. The it's really, the friction is very difficult. So you have a caboose, you have a box car, and you have a coal car. And here, let wow. me just, I'm gonna stick with only the, uh, the, the curved pieces to try to pull this out. Okay. Up. You know, it almost looks like those four curved pieces will not make a circle. Uh, it just <laughs> looks like it's not quite curved You might enough. be right. Well, that would be funny. Oh, you know what? We get a lot more than four. Okay, I oh, thought we only had okay. four. I was gonna say, I think it takes six to make a uh, There we go, curve. okay. So these, uh, this is the first time I'm seeing They just seeing lock this. into each other? It looks like Oh, it. they're very easy. Oh, yeah. very good. So they just kind of slide in. Yeah. Oh, that's right, because you don't, they don't need to uh, make uh, electrical contacts. Right. And Everything is in the... Uh, the, the in the engine. Engine. Ooh. There we go. Okay. Oh, those, it's black on black. It looks yeah, black like on black is a little <laughs> difficult to <laughs> it's, see. It's like the tracks are vanishing as you put them yeah, down. Yeah, let's see. We can kind of have a little piece of paper here. We could just there kind of you set go. Under there, that. Oh, there's track building at its best. Well, there you go. And then and we'll... now get the golden spike ready <laughs> as right? the yeah. east joins the west. The Gizwiz Railroad is the Disneyland Railroad coming together. Mid country. There we go. There we go. And so I could obviously Whoa. make a more a more exciting uh, track. It looks like you know I may have been wrong off of the number of of tracks. So, or I don't know if I can open this actually, up. Actually, that that's that's actually a cute little. Was this thing just five dollars? Four, five, six. Uh, there's a, a six of these, by the way, in here <coughs> as well. Yeah, this All is, right, this so you make a, decent, a really decent oval. Yeah, so you can make an oval uh, with it. So let's go ahead and set these on. <laughs> of course, Will, that's an awfully sharp curve. Uh, mm -hmm. 
fit? How? Will this fit? One second. Let's make sure that. Okay, yeah, there we go. And there we go. Okay, so the train is on there. Let's set the. Of course, wow. that needs the coal. Wow. Okay, and let's set that on there. All right. It doesn't use any fancy uh, connector. It's just a uh, circle and a peg. Oh, that's okay. Okay. Now, of course, the box car is next. So let's grab that, set it on the connector. This is fun. And the wow. caboose. Finally, the caboose. Now, which does the caboose, is this the front of the caboose or is this the front of the caboose? Uh, the front is where the, the, the uh, little house on top is the back of the caboose. Yeah, okay. that's it. There well, that's not how they made it because, oh. Yeah, that's not how they made it. Cause oh, did they make it the connect, other way? Yeah, they made it backwards. Oh, that's but, the front. Okay, so we'll put it that that's way. That's all right. So. Okay. And let's start I, it. I say it's going to derail instantly. Woo-woo. Uh-oh. Woo-woo. Uh-oh. <laughs> okay, one second. Let's, uh. <laughs> Okay. A train crashes. Emin a train crashes. Eminent says Ranger Rick. Okay. Okay. The, it seems like the the wheels on this. Uh, also, it's very funny because this shot. It almost looks like the trains are on a wall. <laughs> yes, they defy gravity. Okay. Anti gravity locomotive. And how much would you pay for that? There it goes. Whoa. Woohoo! Oh my wow! I am very impressed. That's it works. I am very impressed. It almost looked like that locomotive was gonna go right off the tracks. He keeps he just keeps turning. Anytime he's about ready to fall off, he keeps turning. Oh, wow. oh, oh, we lost the caboose! Oh, oh no! Oh, oh. train wreck! Oh train my gosh! Wreck. Industrial oh my gosh. disaster. Um, well we got like we got at least a dozen good loops. That was pretty good, I gotta say. Yeah. Okay, it makes me want to like you know expand and play play a little bit longer, but um, I would was say this just five bucks. Yeah, five dollars, five dollars for this little train set. Oh. It's interesting uh, for some reason when when it's up, uh, you know, not on the track, it's so much easier to to kind of start and and get working. But I could see that uh, I could have a lot of fun. Uh, and then, of course, you know, if it's so inexpensive, there was uh, other sets as well that I think had different pieces. Um, and this is, once again, at five below. So you could, uh, you could add a few more different trains and different cars to your set if, uh, if you wanted to. Seems pretty simple. I'm, uh, I'm impressed, I gotta say. Yeah, it looks like... The the smallest thing they have on Amazon looks very similar, but it's ten bucks. Yeah, so you get it for half the price. Yeah. Five below. Okay, we're not going to do quite as big of a train because it was quite a thing to set up. But uh, here is the. Here we go. Let's just throw the the coal car on there and set it. There it goes. <laughs> He seems like he's going pretty that is, fast. That is, that is pretty decent. Oh, you know what? I think I pretty much found the same set. Did you? Uh, toy Train in a Tin. Is that what it's called? It, this is a plastic oh, oh, box, yeah. okay. but basically. Uh, toy Train in a Tin. Uh, you have to buy two sets because they're only sold as two sets. Oh. Two sets for $19. So you got a good deal. Yeah. The cheapest you can get them for on Amazon is $9.50. Now, I'm I'm impressed. I'm impressed. This if I was a kid and I went to my uh, parents' office and I had this to play around with, <coughs> I would be entertained. Especially if you could have more track, so you could do some like curves and yeah. stuff like that. That would be absolutely fun. Um, but yeah, and then uh, you know just to get show you some detail on the trains, it's just a single sticker um, with That's a little okay. bit of uh, of plastic, you know. Single screw. Um, on the train itself, this is uh, what it looks like, and the little screw to undo is right here. So you have to undo this screw. I didn't find oh, that this got in the that, way too I see. much. So the battery <clears throat> is inside the locomotive, right? Right. Wow. So you had to undo okay. the screw right there, and then you'd squeeze each side to kind of unhook these uh, little clamps and pull it off, and the battery is right under there. Just a single double A is all you need. 
uh, to get it working. But um, I think that's very cute. Yeah, so that is uh, the mini train set. You can buy it at mini five tra- below, and uh, found online elsewhere, but uh, not quite the same price. But I absolutely adore it. The little mini train set. Um, no, I think it's very, very cute. I think a kid could spend a couple of hours playing with that. Yeah, exactly. I also like how it uh, it compacts pretty nicely. Once, yeah. once you're done, you do have a little place to to store it inside of the uh, <coughs> the little box here. So yeah, so you can uh, you know you don't have <laughs> your mom's office or your dad's office uh, doesn't. So instead um, of a roundhouse, it goes in a rectangular box. Right. But it's very cute. Very cute. Exactly. It's right on in there. Anyway, so that is the mini train for my crappy corner. And with that, let's jump into Dick's Gadget Warehouse. <laughs> they're geeky and they're goofy. Together they are happy. When gadgets pass away, he takes them out to play. In Dick's Gadget Warehouse. Fog on. And our gadget video of the week comes from a viewer who sent this note. Hi, Dick and Chad. I've been a viewer for about two years. I really enjoy the show. Thank Whenever you. you do the Gadget Warehouse segment, I think about my Commodore VIC-20 computer that's been sitting on a shelf in my basement untouched for 25 years. Wow. I wonder how cool it would be to see if I could get it working again. I finally got around to it, captured it on video, and uh, thought it might be a good fit for the show. Perfect Keep up the great fit. work. Mark Rosens. And so along with Mark, we're going to see what happens when you plug in a 25-year-old computer. Perfect. Hey, Dick and Chad. This is Mark from Michigan. And I'm down in my own gadget warehouse down in the basement here where I've got a Commodore VIC-20 computer. In box, and no This way. was one of the original wow. consumer mass market home computers. And it's been sitting on my shelf here for about 25 years. So I have no idea if this thing even works, but I'm going to give it a try and I'd like to take you guys along with me. So here it is, the VIC-20. I bought this way back in 1982 when I was uh, just starting out as a computer science college student. The uh, computer consists of the main chassis, which is a keyboard with an integrated motherboard and processor. There is no hard disk, so all the I.O. and storage is done through this cassette player. The cassette, nice. And yeah, that, I had that the, for my uh, Atari. The display takes place through your TV using an RF modulator. used to hook up to the uh, antenna terminals on the TV, but uh, since those no longer exist, I had to rig up a cable that uh, that goes to coax input. So we got this all wired up and ready to go. Let's see if it'll start. Oh, please cross so his here's fingers! The moment of truth. Ta-da. I'm going to turn on the power and see what happens. Oh, power oh, works. The, the red that, light, the light turned on. Power has indeed, light has indeed turned on, so that's a good sign. Uh, I'm not seeing any. Will this high tech TV be able to figure <laughs> out this low tech computer? High TV, let's try switching the RF modulator. Nope. No, no, no come on. I'm changing the channel on the TV here. Oh, yeah. 304. Do three. Do three. Ox, ox. Oh, oh my hey. gosh. Oh. Oh. Look at that. What happened? I saw something. <laughs> yep. Oh, it's back. Wow. Wow, you have a whole 3,000 bytes free. Oh, my it's God. You couldn't even working. do a picture, could you? After wow. all these years. No. Uh, uh, maybe in ASCII. Not the greatest picture, but um, <gasps> that is so there cool. it is. Now that we got it up and running, let's see if we can load a program on it. Wow! Well, this tape holds a program that I wrote uh, 35 years ago now, um, when I first got the computer. 
and uh, let's see if we can I love get the this radio to load shack logo. and run on yes, the yes, you know, radio Given shack. the age of the tape, it's unlikely, tape, but let's tape give it a try. Computer. Probably so, three dollars more than pick up right. and running. And uh, oh, I remember it took like three or four minutes to the, load one thing from read a cassette. The tape and Except get the program ready to run. And I think they had the same so program here. back and front. So in case one side, oh, it can't find All it. All right, so we press play on the tape. And wow, this is so cool. We'll see if it finds the program. What are the odds? Oh, loading. Holy cow. Loading, wow. <laughs> oh, I love it that. It appears to have found the program on the tape. I love that Kelly recorded -old tape. That's as amazing. this is working. I, uh, yeah, it's I, great. He didn't try it first and the then show us. No, far. no. His excitement is together. so uh, genuine. The tape is loading up. Let's see if it gets through. It's, it's let old bits and bytes to read off a uh, an old cassette tape. And then I remember well, that. Oh, no! program loaded to the point where it would run. I tried loading a couple other tapes as well, and uh, as you can see, they got kind of mangled by the um, recorder, and the ones that didn't uh, never got to the point where they'd fully load and run, so not surprising given the age of these, uh, these tapes, but it was worth a try. So the last thing I'd like to mention about the VIC-20 was uh, one of the peripherals that I bought for it at the time. It's called the VIC Modem. This was a dial-up modem that was all of 300 baud, which I believe is one thirty thousandths of a megabit. <laughs> so, very slow, but it really came in handy back then. As a college student, I was able to dial into the university's computer rather than wait in line for the teletype machines. And uh, back then, that was a kind of unique opportunity. So, uh, it really did work out for me well. So. That's about it for the VIC-20. Uh, thanks for letting me share it with you. And uh, Dick and Chad, I really love the show. Keep up the good work. That is so cool. I'm so Thank sad. Thank you, Mark Rosen. And that I missed that, that was... generation of computers because that is so cool. So cool. That was neat. That was neat. Mark, you'll get a uh, current issue of Mad Magazine, one of those Alfred E. Newman pictures, and we need more videos. Okay, we're, we're getting a lot of repeat videos from people who have sent us other videos, but we'd love another new viewer for next week. Uh, Mark is a new, uh, uh, not a new viewer, but the first one to send in his first video for us. And it's so easy. You have something in your house that we would like to see. It can be a brand new gadget that you love, a brand new gadget you hate, something on a shelf somewhere. I know you have it. People, people have a lot of stuff that they can't throw out. It's in a drawer. Just drag it out, make a little video with your phone, as Mark did in the horizontal plane, and uh, put it on YouTube. Click unlisted when you upload it. That way only people with the link can see it. Send us the link. And it goes to mail at gizwiz.tv. And if we use it on the show, you get the current issue of MAD and you get one of those 30 to 35 year old Alfred e. Newman pictures. Okay. So I don't think we have a video for next week from anybody new. So be that person, mail at gizwiz.tv. And if you're a new uh, contributor and for some reason we overlooked your video, remind us about it too, okay? Mail at gizwiz.tv. And the offer for the magazine and the thing, you have to live in U.S. or Canada. I should mention that. If not, we'll give you a shout out on the show. We'll give you bragging rights. Oops, sorry about that. <laughs> Jumping back into the uh, to the warehouse. Uh, so, okay, with that, let's jump into the letter.
Time for the letters. And Kelly Rothschilds writes to OMG Chad. Ooh. It's a very long letter, so I'm putting the whole letter on uh, the uh, gizwiz.biz, but I'm just going to read the second part. Uh, Chad, put a microwave safe bowl half full of water in your microwave, okay. put it on high for five minutes, and then just wipe the microwave with a paper towel. It's too some easy. People too easy. <laughs> some, people, uh, some people advise a little bit of vinegar, lemon juice, baking soda. Lemon juice But the so truth better, is water alone works just fine. And Kelly fesses up that she thinks that came from David Pogue's Life Hacks book. Interesting. Uh, she said, I just use the glass bowl. I use water only. I use no vinegar. So it's one less gadgets. And she says, Chad, I think your cats might prefer the aroma of <laughs> vanilla or citrus. I think I would. <laughs> Forget the cats. I still, I still love the show, Kelly. How long did it take for the vinegar smell to go it took, away? It took about two days. Uh, oh, my god! Before gosh. I wouldn't walk in the house and go, ooh, vinegar. Um, yeah, no, I I agree. Uh, I don't know what the vinegar would do to really, you know, once it's microwaved and it's mist, I don't know what it would really do in order to decontaminate or degrease a microwave. No need for, for angry mama. I don't, we don't need no angry mama here. We just need a, a microwave and a microwave, microwave safe ball. Thank you so oh. much, Kelly. There I you agree. go. Five minutes. We'll do it. I oh actually have gosh. a dirty microwave. I will try it. Yes. You, you try it in yours and then share yes. the results. And really, yes. it was just, you know, all this stuff that's just kind of caked in there just loosens up. I wouldn't really say that it, I mean, I, I guess the smell went away a bit. But it doesn't really matter because the next time you microwave something in there, it's going to smell like that. Yes, you know, it is. The next time yes. you put pizza in there, it's going to smell like pizza. The next time you put popcorn in there, it's going to smell like popcorn. Um, so, <clears throat> yep. Nice. Uh, uh, yes. Kelly, thank you. Thank you so much, Kelly. Hey, and hey, while we're thanking people, why don't we thank our patrons over at oh Patreon.com. Oh, my gosh, com. yes. Let me uh, look at the number again on 92nd Independent Show. 92nd Independent Show with you guys supporting us all the way. Thank you so much to our 284 patrons. Uh, you guys are absolutely fantastic. You support every show. Each show we do something uh, well, we, I guess we do something. I don't know. Sorry, I'm <laughs> yeah. still sick. Uh, each show, uh, you guys support us, is what I was trying to say, um, and uh, make the show happen. Thank you guys so much. If you're unfamiliar with what Patreon is, Patreon is a platform for you to support independent content creators like ourselves, like me and Dick. There's no, there's no big corporation behind us. We don't have the man. There's no one but you behind. No, there's no. Yeah, really. Only the only people behind us is our audience, and uh, you guys help support the show. Uh, so thank you so much uh, for that. Uh, if you uh, want to support, you can either use Patreon or if some people don't want to do a reoccurring donation, and if you just want to give to the show, listen, our our, our hearts um, throb with your generosity. So thank you so much. There's also a PayPal uh, donation link on, at gizwiz.tv. You have to click the Patreon uh, tab, and then uh, right underneath the big banner is uh, the PayPal link. But thank you guys so much for your support. Really, it means a lot, and it really helps us uh, do the show. There's a lot of expenses with the servers and buying new gadgets and going to trade shows. for Paying for DSL. Pay, paying for internet. Uh, buying new webcams for the show or uh, upgrades for the computers. There's a whole bunch of stuff. So thank you guys so much for letting the show happen every single week. Uh, you guys are absolutely yeah. uh, And before I forget, someone asked uh, in the chat room last week or the week before, did the guy who invented the water bottle for the uh, snow ski, I think it was. Yeah, the snowboard the, water bottle. Yeah, Colder. the snowboard water bottle. Till the end of February, 50% off. Uh, with the code word Gizwiz. Well, I forgot who? to mention that. Gizwiz, okay, is the code word, 20% off. And I wish I had remembered his website to mention his website. Um, but uh, I'll try and find it. Uh, uh, while you're finding that, let me uh, tell people to head on over to gizwiz.biz because there's show notes about all of the products that we talk about on the show. 
Uh, Dick does a great write-up of each and everything. Also, things like the letter, uh, which we paraphrase here on the show, is in its full glory at gizwiz.biz. While you're there, go ahead and play the What the Heck Is It game! This is a game where we take a gadget, the whole gadget, the entire gadget, and we try to figure out what the heck is it based only off of a photo of the gadget. And this is the whole gadget, not just a portion or a piece. This is it. So the, what you're looking at right now, that is, in fact, the gadget. And uh, you guess there's 12 Mad Magazines for correct answers and 24 for cute, hilarious, silly or ridiculous answers, and it's obvious to me. Um, you know, after you get cheese at the store uh, and you cut off a few bits, uh, it's, not, it's not symmetrical anymore. So this is a cheese sharpening device. You just <laughs> roll your cheese right through I the middle like of that, that, that hole right there, and you get, you get sharp cheese. Uh, that's what they say. You see the extra sharp, you know, you've seen that on the packaging. That's how you make some sharp cheese. Uh, get a guessin' over at gizwiz.biz. And our friend's uh, website is uh, boardbottlebuddy.com. Board bottle Board buddy. Bottle buddy. Okay, 50% off. Gizwiz is the discount code till the end of February. Perfect. Uh, and don't forget to watch our show live. We're alive. We are alive. Well, when do we do that? <laughs> when uh, that lightning bolt struck us and uh, <laughs> we rose. That's when we became alive. Uh, you can watch the show live at gizwiz.tv on Thursdays around uh, 430 Pacific, 730 Eastern Time. All you have to do is go on over, over to gizwiz.tv. And there we are, embedded right there for you. If uh, we're not live, that doesn't show up. And you can also join the chat room. I really, I really suggest that you join the chat room and uh, chat along with us. You can also subscribe to the show, iTunes, RSS, or on YouTube. We got all the stuff there. Also, all of our previous shows are hosted on gizwiz.tv. Thanks so much for watching this episode, and we'll see you next time on the Gizwiz. And I'll be here.